Wyatt Davis, offensive lineman at Ohio State, opted out the same day that Ryan Day posted a message on Twitter asking why can't his kids play as it's really weird in Ohio right now because Cincinnati's playing, right? They're playing high school football in Ohio. Cincinnati Bengals are playing. Everybody but Ohio State in the state of Ohio, save the Toledo, is playing, right? Because the MAC canceled fall football. And then we had Rutgers president give an interview to Steve Politi at uh, NJ.com. I think it's the Star Ledger is the newspaper, where he said, no, I don't want to play football. And if I'm erring on the side of caution, that turns out to be that I'm wrong to do it. I'm not going to feel bad about that. And then he added, I don't think I'm wrong, though. I don't think we should be playing football. I don't think that it's safe to play football. I don't think that I can keep anybody safe under these circumstances. And you basically have the Big Ten becoming the Big Eight zombie version with eight teams that want to play and six teams that don't. And we've had so much conversation about this because as media members, you're either, hey, why don't you want to play college football? Pays your bills. Of course I want to play college football, but not at the expense of somebody getting hurt. And I think we have the worst possible outcome that we could have which is little over half the teams are playing. Little over half the teams are not. If everybody was not playing, we could all be collectively pissed, but we'd all be pulling in one direction. If everybody chose to play, people like me would be like, I don't think this is a great idea, but it would have an opportunity for everybody to try to figure out that they can't do it or they can do it, and it would probably have strengthened the sport. As it is today, I think we're so splintered that this weakens the sport. This is the weakest that I've ever seen the sport because there are people that don't feel good about rooting for college football in the same way that they feel good about rooting for the NFL or the NBA or the NHL or the WNBA because the kids don't have as much agency. So they've opted out because they're saving themselves or they make money next year. So like, what do you think about the first opt-out that we saw at Ohio State and this idea that the Big Ten is wants to play football come October. Yeah, I, it's not necessarily the best look in the world. The, the same day that your head coach basically begs for an opportunity to play football, one of his players says, go oh, that ain't happening, I'm out of here. I, I think, look, I think I've been pretty vocal through this process. I am by no means an expert in any of this stuff, and I'm not going to be one of those guys who changes his – Twitter app to one of them egg things and just start ragging on people for absolutely no reason because suddenly I have a, a doctorate degree. I, I just don't know really what the right answer is. And I think a lot of us don't know what the right answer is. That being said, I mean, I am all for finding the best way to go about allowing these players and coaches the opportunity to go play the sport that they love while also upholding some of the financial obligations that this sport allows for not just the athletic department, the entire universities in general. Now, I understand that there's a lot at risk. There's the liability factor. And I know there are a lot of people with hair that is a little bit grayer than mine who don't want to necessarily deal with a bunch of young dudes' medical bills. I get it. But at the same time, I mean, it's just, there's not a right way to do this, so let's go ahead and try and attack some normalcy if we know that we can go about it the right way. I I don't blame any Ohio State players for opting out because, I mean, let's go ahead and face it. These guys have been in the dark for the entirety of this process. They have no idea what the future holds. I mean, their head coach has no idea what's going on right now. So what makes you think these guys are just going to sit and wait for something to happen. Those guys are way too talented and they have too much ahead of themselves to just sit on their hands and allow someone else to make their decisions for them. So I give props to anybody who decides to say, you know what? We don't really know the right answers right now. If that's the case, I know what the right answer is for me and I'm going to go ahead and capitalize on this. So I just hope that in the end we find the right course of action. We'll see what happens this weekend. We've already had a bunch of postponements and cancellations. I think you mentioned some of your biggest fears. Just my biggest fear is getting to the midpoint of college football season having to shut this thing down. So my biggest grievance now is like if if, if that's the course of action we have to take, then then maybe there are people like that Rutgers guy saying, look, it's just not worth it. But I don't know, man. I think that there's a right, right way to go about this. And if people aren't going to go about it the right way, like 
honestly, some of the Big Ten leadership has, then these these players need to take it upon themselves to go ahead and showcase the fact that they can make decisions on their own. Dude, I hit 2020 bingo on the card yesterday because Bob mm. Bowlesby came out here saying, I don't believe in cancel culture. I'm like, wait, hold up, time out. What? That, I win. I win. I got a sitting lead commissioner to use the phrase cancel culture when talking about whether or not to play football or sports, really. Like, I was expecting a pro commissioner to say that, but for Bob Bowlesby to say that on the Paul Feinbaum show in reference to, I wanted to get all the facts, I wanted to try to play football, you could have said that without saying cancel culture because, yo, Bob, that ain't what that actually means. So who are you getting your notes from? Whoever you got your notes from, Bob, did you a disservice, Bob, because there are those of us that actually, you know, live in the 21st century and talk to people in the 21st century who know what that phrase means. And uh, I have never heard a worse use of the phrase cancel culture. I'm like, okay, that means we got to retire it, right? Just like when, 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 when some people were talking about Becky, had to retire that. Karen, going to have to retire that. You know what I mean? Uh, on fleek, had to retire that. Ratchet had to retire that. I think we got to retire uh, cancel culture because Bob Bowlesby out here talking about cancel culture in reference to playing football. And I'm like, did anybody ask you? So I, when I heard that, I had to go back and listen to it to make sure I wasn't getting it out of context. And I'm not. He really thought cancel culture was about canceling football. To which I've never seen this side of Bob Bowlesby before. Like the, the Bob Bowlesby that we have seen that run, runs the Big 12 is vanilla. Right? He's the dude that we mm-hmm. dunk on for Oklahoma having so many 11 a.m. kicks. Right? We're, he's the dude that we say, hey, why don't you fight more for the Big 12? Or can you come up with a better argument for the Big 12 other than the bowl, the, the bowl records of the Big 12 teams? Because, you know, that ain't very good either. <laughs> Seeing Bob Bowlesby be a s- saber rattler was not on the card either. So, like I said, I've, I've scratched bingo out like six times on the 2020 card. So knowing that we have these power five or I see power three commissioners that want to play ball, that are going to try to play ball, I'm with you as well because the only way that this gets worse is if you don't get to finish the season. Because mm-hmm. I can't see anybody trying to mount a spring season, even right now. And I certainly can't see it if you got to cancel the season, say mid-October, early November. I, I just don't. I think everybody's going to have to shut it down and wait until next year because now you're truncating some things and you're forcing some issues that are going to have some long-term ramifications beyond pandemic, right? Beyond vaccines, beyond controlling the, the outbreaks. Like, you can cripple the sport right now if you screw this up. And, and I wanted to underscore that. Do you think I'm, I'm being an alarmist there, too? No, I think you're right. Okay, because this is my big thing, right? So you brought up spring football, and I'm so glad that you did. There is no way in hell that spring fall football. Just no way. I have a hard time believing that that is going to happen and it's going to happen effectively. So then, if football is going to be a lost cause, which I hope it is, just go for it in the fall, man. And if you can't go for it in the fall, just don't. It's a bummer that the fact that so many people aren't on the same page right now when it comes to these issues. I Maybe that's just the nature of what we're dealing with, and it's as simple as that, but I understand they're trying to come up with creative solutions. I just don't think spring football is the right way to do this, and I think a lot of these players are trying to indicate that with some of these opt-outs. But in the end, I mean, we're still on this collision course to complete unknown, and it's just it's a shame that people want to try and be uniform with some sort of fall football season. And people insist on pushing this thing towards the spring and just seeing what happens. 